Hello and welcome to today's study, Mission to the Needy. Before starting our study, let's have a word of prayer. Our most loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for this lovely day. Thank you for all your blessings and your praise upon us. Lord, as we are going to study about the mission to the needy, we pray that you help us to understand more fully what you have in store for us, Father. Lord, May the Holy Spirit be present with us throughout the study to help us understand and help us to dig deeper into your word. For we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mission to the Needy The key text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 40. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say unto you, in as much as you did it to one of least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. If Christ were among us in poverty, how readily would we relieve him? In prison, how frequently would we visit him? Where our poor and needy are, there Christ is ready to receive our kindnesses in them, and they shall be put to his account. So when Jesus came to save sinners, he caught those sinners' attention in a variety of ways. Mission to the needy requires a definite plan, a specific goal, specific goals and objectives. So mission to the needy uh, requires all these things planned and above everything else, we need much prayer. We have a great example, Jesus. We read it in the word of God. Jesus often withdrew to places, solitary places to pray. And sometimes he prayed through the night and that gave him the power to go and reach out to people. And we know that Jesus' method will always give us the true success in reaching the people. Sunday's lesson, the faith of friends. Let's start with Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. I would encourage you all to open your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. In verse 17, we see Jesus was teaching. Many were present, and we read it in the last part, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. I'm reading verses 18 to 20. And behold, men brought in a, be in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the household and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Verse 20, and when he saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. In verse 17, we see the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So that's an encouragement for us. When we try to help people reach to Christ, we will have the power of the Lord present. And yeah, the power of the Lord is present to bring about a change. We just need to take that step, that initiation in order to reach people. When Jesus was present for the needy, there was a need for others to be a bridge between Jesus and the ones who are in need. Um, let me uh, read a few thoughts from, um, from a commentary, Matthew Henry's commentary. So six days we ought to labor, not only for the world, but for the soul, welfare and the welfare of that. You know, I'm reading it again. Six days we ought to work, not for the world, but for the soul and the welfare of them. So whenever there was occasion, Christ had not to seek for the power, it was present to heal. You know, whenever there was occasion, Christ was had not to seek. He need not seek for the power, but it was always present to heal. So 
the duties that are taught and recommended to us by the stories, in our applications to Christ, we must be pressing and urgent. That is an evidence of faith, and it is very pleasing to Christ and prevailing with him. Friends of the sick man sought means to bring him in before Christ. You know, when they tried the traditional way of entering in through the door, they could when they couldn't do it, when the endeavor did not work out, then they did not give up, you know. When they were baffled in their endeavors, they did not give up uh, their cause, but you know, when they could not get in by the door, they untile the house. They use the unconventional method. Sometimes we need to be innovative in order to reach out to people, in order to bring them to Christ. So in the word of God, we see Jesus reaching out to people in a variety of ways. And the particular passage that we read here uh, that we have here is an interesting one and you know Jesus did not condemn them for using this method instead he approves them yeah he approves them um so the gospel reveals some men uh, what some men went through in order to bring a um, needy person to Jesus this work this work of reaching out to people will require faith faith in God that he is there his power is there in for us this power is there his power will be manifested in us in order to reach out to people and then we need to take an action action is very important and then sometimes we need to be patient with people we need to be patient with people with patient with the circumstances and then we need to be willing to work we need to be willing to work for god we need to have the heart to reach out to people and then to be unconventional if need be just like the friends of the sick man we need to find innovative ways to reach out to people and with that um, we'll move on to the monday's lesson christ method alone john chapter 5 verses 1 to 9 here the we read about the healing of the man with infirmity for 38 years by the pool of bethesda Jesus is coming in search of this person. You know, he came in search of this person with a question, uh, will thou be made whole? You know, Jesus saw him lying. His eyes, God's eyes are always on the needy and poor. And he is, he really and truly cares for the needy and poor. So one of the Bible come uh, commentators, one of the Bible commentators compare this pool of Bethesda to a hospital, this pool of Bethesda to a hospital. Uh, here is where people come uh, to uh, do their arms and to help the people who are in need and all that. So uh, one thing is very interesting here. Observe, when Christ came up to Jerusalem, he visited not the palaces. He did not visit the palaces, but a hospital, which is an instance of his humility and condescension and tender compassion and an indication of his great design in coming into the world, which was to seek and save the sick and wounded. Yeah, uh, Jesus is our greatest example, is our greatest model to follow. So it is his honor, it is his Christ's honor to side with the weakest and bear up those whom he sees run down. So we know that Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. There are five steps of Jesus' method on teaching us how to minister especially to those in need first step first step is to mingle with the helpless is to mingle with the helpless just like how jesus mingled with the helpless uh some at some point of time jesus was accused for being uh, for mingling with sinners and then um, being a uh, you know um having food with the sinners and uh, they even uh, title them as a gluttonous person. So the first step that we can learn from Jesus' method is to mingle with the helpless. 
and we need to spend time getting to know them and then we need to understand their needs and this needs some groundwork you know if god inspires a, if god puts a person in your mind uh, then take your journal write down their name and uh, get to know about them get to know their needs get to know their background get to their get to know their likes and dislikes and you know it needs a little work and then second we have to show sympathy um sympathy without expecting anything in written you know you cannot go and uh, talk to them for two days and third day you cannot expect them to accept Christ or accept your thoughts your beliefs and all that but um uh, instead of expecting anything in written, we just have to go with the true spirit of helping, with the true spirit of meeting their needs. And when we do that wholeheartedly, yes, the law is going to give us um, a great reward. And third step, we have to minister to their needs. In John chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, first Jesus spoke. First Jesus spoke. And then he asked what he wanted. Then he worked in miracles. That's an example for us to follow. In, but in the story of the man possessed by an unclean spirit, Jesus took complete control of the situation, doing for the helpless what he could not do for himself. So uh, in some instances, we need to step in and help. We need to step in and help. Fourth step of Jesus' method is winning their confidence. This doesn't happen so easily, but you have to work with all your heart. You know, when you help and minister to them, you gain their trust. And when you gain their trust, they start listening to what you are ready to say. So we have to remember that uh, the healing is not just physical, but it uh, it has to concentrate on the spiritual level also and not just spiritual, physical, spiritual, emotional, social. And there are so many needs of men uh, that are not met. So, uh, and we shouldn't forget the weighty matter, the eternal life, you know. We will have a friend, we'll have a colleague, we'll have a neighbor, um, you know, we have so many people around us and they are so good to us. They will be uh, really a good person. And uh, won't, you, won't you want them to be with you in heaven? Uh, we have uh, to remember that presenting to them the eternal life is very important more than anything else. So when you have done uh, your work, your part, and when you have uh, gained their confidence, then the next step, the fifth step, obviously, is to lead them to Jesus. Yeah, so. Moving on to Tuesday's lesson, Refugees and Immigrants. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19 here, God encourages us to love your strangers, love your strangers. And then in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 22, God gives specific advices in order to help the poor and the stranger. And also says, do not uh, harvest the entire field, leave the corners for the poor. And we also read in the book of Ruth, how Ruth was helped by Boaz. Uh, by the reapers uh, in leaving some of the grains, uh, uh, you know, some of the grains for her to take it for herself. So God is so much concerned about poor, stranger and needy. And at some point of time, we would have been a stranger. We would have been, um, we would have been in need, you know, uh, we know how it feels to be a stranger in a place. We know uh, how good it would be. It it was when someone came and checked on us or someone made us feel at home and all that. So we shouldn't forget to love our strangers. John chapter 15, verse 13, it talks about laying of our lives for our friends. So how much love we should have only the hearts that are touched by the love of god the praise of god can reach out to people will have the hunger and thirst for the souls 
you know we we will get that mentality of laying down of our lives for our friends obviously it is a challenging work but it brings great rewards when we model the ministry of jesus uh, we read in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Now here we see Jesus was a refugee. Jesus was a refugee. Can you imagine Mary had just given birth to a baby and that is a, a phase which is very difficult, postpartum phase, where they'll have so many challenges practically. And, uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden when you're about to uh, leave for a place which is uh, which is strange, which is a foreign, foreign country to you and which uh, which has got different uh, culture, different people, different uh, things. And, you know, um, you can imagine the challenges they would have had. Jesus was rescued in an unchristian nation, a nation pagan, and Jesus was a refugee. The Bible says nothing about their experience in Egypt, but it's not hard to imagine that it had its own challenges. Perhaps some of the challenges that a refugee will face as well. So uh, when... Um, when we see means, ways and means to uh, mingle with uh, the refugees and immigrants, yes, it will be challenging in order to mingle, to understand their priorities, their different backgrounds. You know, we will often face the legitimate fear, the reasonable fear, uh, because um, the immigrants and refugees, they look different from us. They do not speak our language. They do not share the same religious values. And they do not even eat our similar, eat our food, the food that we eat. So uh, getting to know them, to mingle with them is going to be tough, but nothing is impossible with God. So. The very first step that we have to do is to pray. We need to pray and God will open up the doors and he will bring opportunities. He will bring opportunities. So we just uh, saw that heart that is transformed, a life that is touched and healed by God will reach out to the people in mercy. You know, we read in Beatitudes, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. You know, you have received it freely and you will be ready to give it to someone else who is in need freely. So, well, during this process, we should be patient, we should be praying, and we need to be, um, at times, we need to come out of our comfort zone. So when we do that, we can reach out to people uh, who are refugees and immigrants. Um, they need not be just refugees and immigrants. They can, they can be any people from a different country who have come to our place to study or for their work. Uh, they, they will be away from their parents, their friends, their community. So that's the chance in our hands God has placed in order to go and, um, you know, reach out to them. So we can join as a church family to uh, you know reach out to them we can initiate a program or there are organizations which is reaching out to people who are refugees and immigrants and with that we are moving to uh, the wednesday's lesson to help the hurting you know we often think the needy people are the ones who lack materialistic blessings, but that is not true. Irrespective of the social status, irrespective of their backgrounds, every human is in some need, you know. There are people who are hurting irrespective of their backgrounds. People are hurting, suffering and struggling, you know. Uh, here is an encouragement for all of us. Um, 
it's not just the people who lack materialistic blessings, but all the sex, you know, people from all sectors, they need help. We, they need God's help. You know, we are called as God's helper for people in need, regardless of their background, that their needs differ. Their needs differ. Their needs like physical, emotional, financial, and social needs, they all differ. And we can easily identify the needs in order to minister for the needy. If you see the statistics, about the increase of antidepressant drugs. You know, the latest increase means that the number of antidepressant items prescribed over the past six years has increased by 34.8 percentage. That is from 61.9 million items in 2015, 2016 to 83.4 million items in 2021, 2022. So, there are many people who are undergoing depression. There are many people who are looking for drugs. You know, there are people who are from a very uh, well-to-do background, but still they're suffering with so much emotional and social needs. So when God brings those people to our attention, it is our duty to reach out to them and minister to them. So we need to mingle. We need to minister, serve. We need to show that we really care, understand and sympathize with them. We need to follow the principles first. And the greatest commandment in the principle is love your neighbor as yourself. Christ's object lesson, page 197, we read, As our sympathies shall broaden and our love increase, we shall find everywhere a work to do. Everywhere we step into, we will find a work to do. God's great human household embraces the world and none of its members are to be passed by with neglect. So, when we fill our cups with the love of Christ, when our cup is full and when it's overflowing, we will reach out to people and we will share that love with others. And wherever you we go, we will find opportunities to help people. And um, I'm reading a quote from Ministry of Healing, page 143. Christ's method will alone, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, we see. We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. God, we see God is ministering to us. We see God is ministering to us. And the golden rule, as we saw, the way you like to be treated, treat someone in need. Love your neighbor as yourself. So caring for people is not a short-term commitment, not at all. It's not a short-term commitment, but it has to be a long-term commitment and it has to be consistent and only through a consistent prayer life, only through a consistent mindset, we will be able to do this work. And in India, we can reach out to people through our hospitality. By sharing our meal, by sharing our food, we can reach out to people and that will show them that we really care and love for them. You know, sharing our food is like sharing, you know, it's like accepting them as one of our family members. So yeah, that's one of an, one of the effective way to um, minister unto the needy. So moving on to Thursday's lesson, greater love, we know, as we all know, and we know too well, the needs never end. So if you are willing to help others, if you are really willing to help others, you will have plenty of opportunities. You will have plenty of opportunities. Jesus took the initiative and went to those in need. He went to people who were in need. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So 
can you imagine the love of Christ? He has laid down his life. You know, he has taken the subordinate position in order to uh, come and save us. You know, he took the initiative and he came for us. And when we have the same spirit of Christ in us, we will take an initiative in order to reach out to people. So let's come to the practical part of it. And now we have seen the theory part of it. And now how do we reach out to people? First, we need to identify the person. We need to identify the person and we need to start praying for that person. And that prayer should be very powerful. That prayer should be like interceding, interceding for their salvation. And then we need to ask the following questions. Is this friend, this, this person, my friend, according to Jesus' model of friendship? And then do I know the needs of his or her life? And the third question, how can I lead him or her to Jesus for healing? These are the questions with, we need to ask when we are trying to befriend a person and when we are trying to bring that person to Christ. In Friday's lesson, we see Christ's death was for everyone, regardless of race, nationality, wealth, or background. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, we read, And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the whole world. Also for the whole world. So, if we are going to uh, limit our limit our circle saying i i can reach out only this, this kind of people and not to those kind you know uh this is not what god requires of us god uh has uh given his life for everyone for everyone uh there is no partiality regardless of race nationality wealth or background god has died and he has shed his precious blood for each and every one of us. Just like Jesus, we have to minister unto people who are in need, irrespective of their backgrounds. So in conclusion, I would like to read this passage. What then is true religion? Religion that our God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself being polluted by the world. James chapter 1 verse 29. It seems that James is somewhat echoing these words of Jesus uh, saying, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 25 verses 35 to 37. Needy orphans and widows suffer distress. That touches the heart of the father. So the one who lives a religion that is true will take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the cause of the widow, according to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. So if you are in communion with Christ, you will place his estimate upon every human being who will feel for others the same deep love that Christ has felt for you. Then you will be able to win and not drive. You will be able to attract and not repulse those for whom he died. None would have ever been brought back to God if Christ had not made a personal effort for them. And it is by this personal work that we can rescue souls. When you see those who are going down to death, you will not rest in quiet indifference and ease. Your heart will go out in sympathy for them and you will reach out to them a helping hand. In the arms of your faith and love, you will bring them to Christ. You will watch over and encourage them and your sympathy and confidence will make it hard for them to fear, to fall from their steadfastness. In this work, all the angels of heaven are ready to cooperate. All the resources of heaven are at the command of those 
who are seeking to save the lost. Angels will help you to reach the most careless and the most hardened. And when one is brought back to God, all heaven is glad. Seraphs and cherubs touch their golden harps and sing praises to God and the Lamb for their mercy and loving kindness to the children of men. Christ's Object Lessons, page 197. So, uh, we have to remember that when you offer a glass of water to a person, you know, that kindness God will never forget. And it is written in the book. After finishing the fifth step of introducing your friend to Jesus, introducing your friend to Jesus, you need to continue to pray for them. You need to have a watchful prayer. You need to intercede for them. There, After introducing Christ to them, there your responsibility doesn't end. You know, in the arms of your faith and love, you will bring them to Christ. And after this fifth step, you will watch over them and you will encourage them. Your sympathy and confidence will make it hard for them to fall from their steadfastness so you can continue to be a person uh, who will be interceding, interceding for their salvation. You know, just like how Jesus is uh, our high priest, he's interceding and he is our medi mediator. We are here, present here on this earth to do the same work for the ones who are in needy. And may the good Lord bless us as we find innovative ways and means to reach out to people and there are a variety of ways and when we read the gospel and when we see the examples of how people reached out to people how uh, Jesus reached out to the needy and poor we will be able to find ways to minister unto them may the good Lord bless us as the Holy Spirit continues to inspire our, our minds and our hearts with ideas to reach out to people and thank you so much for joining us today. Have a blessed day.